You know how it is when you're talking about screws. Do you know when you get together with your friends and you're discussing which screw you should be using? Hi, welcome to today's video. Today's video is all about screws, different types of screws, and we're going to help you identify which screw you need for the job. We're going to be talking about uh, head types, or different types of screw heads, the threads, sizes and colours are all very important in choosing the right screw for the right job. Right, so first off, I really want to thank again our sponsor of today's video, which is Centurion Europe, who sent us this great array of different types of screws. So, here we are, we've got stacks of different screws we've been sent, all in nice little neat boxes. Really handy if you keep them in these neat boxes, but if you're anything like everybody else in the country, you end up keeping them in a little jam jar or a glass box, all these leftover bits of screws, and you have no idea what you've got in here. So this video, we're going to try and help you identify the screws, when to use them, how to use them, the different parts of the screw, and how really to store them as well. We'll show you not to do this. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the screw head type. Uh, you may have all heard of posi drive or Phillips screw heads, and that's these cross, cross threads. These are, are very common. Also, you can get slotted. Uh, heads again common but there's also so many others there's um, posi and the Phillips like I've said there's a hexagon head screw a square screw a Torx all sorts of different ones but today we'll be mainly focusing on these Phillips ones so looking at a little pile of screws here I can help identify a few different types of screws here we've got a countersunk screw we've got a flat head screw we've got here a bugle head screw and a countersunk head screw, but it's got these extra ribs to help self countersink the screw so you don't have to pre do that. The size of the screw head and the length of the screw is also going to determine the size of the bit that you'll need. Um, the smaller the number for the bit, the smaller the screw. So, like a posi drive comes in ones, twos, and threes, a number one for a small screw and a number three for a bigger. Same with the Phillips or the flat. Um, but yeah, moving on from that, once you know the head and the bit that you'll need, you're going to need to know what thread you need and also we'll do a demonstration on that so you know when to be using the right screw. And not all screws if you look at them are the same. You will notice that some have thread that's close together, some have thread far apart, some screws are threaded all the way down, some aren't. Some screws even have a reverse thread halfway up, they have a slit in the end for self-cutting, so many different ones. So now we're just going to talk about length of the screw and how to choose the correct length for your application. I think the, the best idea is that whatever you're screwing into or through is you want the screw to penetrate more than halfway into the bottom piece of timber. One of the main differences in the screws that have the thread running all the way to the head or, or not is for the type of material uh, that you'll be using. Often you'll find that a thread for chipboard, which would be a common DIY material you're going to be screwing into, chipboard screw will have thread running all the way along. Same as MDF as well. There are specific MDF screws out there as well. But when you're fixing something like a hardwood or a softwood, the reason why there is no thread here is so that the piece of that you're fixing, the piece you're fixing together, as your screw comes down and pulls tight on it, it's pulling it together, it's not just pushing them both together, so you're getting a much tighter fix. So it keeps pulling in the bottom piece of timber and really squeezing them together. Also hardwood, we're demonstrating on here, going to need a pilot hole and possibly countersink it as well with it being a hardwood, although these have a double um, countersink on the top which helps countersink into the timber. So yeah, we'll just drill one now. As usual, PPE. I've got the goggles on just in case any bits fly off. I don't want to drill further than the size of this and I don't want to drill through this piece of work. You can mark it on here with a piece of tape or with a pen or just by leaving, in this case, I can leave out the amount of drill bit that I need just to pilot my hole. And I think for this demonstration, we're just going to try and screw this down now without Counter sinking, we're just going to go for it using an impact driver and the bit that was provided with the screws. And as you see there, a real tight finish. He's brought them together really well and left that perfectly there. Now we'll show you a way possibly not to do it. If we were to drill a hole that was too big, 
and too deep. And also if we countersink after we've drilled, you end up with a messy, a messy countersink mark there. Um, and then we'd again try and screw one of these screws in. It eventually it did pull them tight. Not a great finish on the top. And another thing to watch out for when putting these screws in, I'll just try and put one in now without a pilot hole. And there we have, we have a split in the timber. Useless piece now, we won't be able to use it. And also, slightly the wrong size bit for this. For this screw, and that's completely stuck in there. So we'll do a little demonstration of how you might be able to get one of these screws out as well. So there are numerous ways of getting these uh, screws out, but we've been <laughs> luckily sent one of these screw extractor kits from Centurion again. So we're going to demonstrate that. One, two, three, four, five. So here we've got five different screw extractors for different size screws. It simply says you find the one that best fits the size of your head of your screw, place it in your drill, in a reverse setting, nice and slow, and just bless if it works and reverse it out. So what it says to do is select the highest torque setting on your driver, which is number one on this one, and the slowest speed, which is done off the trigger in reverse. So let's just see if this works. As it cuts more and more out, I'm just going up the sizes of these bits. There we go. Yep, so I definitely recommend these screw extractors. They definitely get you out of a messy situation. Right, so that's a little demo for you. I recommend always drilling a pilot hole, especially on hardwood. Um, it just stops any problems. If you're drilling softwood into softwood and you're using one of these superior screws maybe not so important if the finish isn't important as well it's like on um, stud work again it's not so important as to drill a pilot hole so remember to use the right length of screw which is more than half of the piece you're screwing into the right thickness determining on the strength of the job you want to go for a bigger screw the right head and making sure you get the right finish as well so the final way of identifying your screw or knowing which screw to use is by colour, you know, probably the first thing you do, you look at it and you try and work out what you've got. So the common colours, we've got zinc, <laughs> zinc screws and a nail, um, these goldy coloured ones and black. And that's very basic, but that's what we've got. Starting off here with the black screws, very often you'll find that these black screws are drywall screws or plasterboard screws with a bugle shaped head and they can come in coarse thread or a fine thread for different purposes. Also we've got here though, it's a shinier screw and it just feels tougher. And it's also got this slightly different tip to it. And this is an exterior grade screw. So this will be great for outside on your black hinges or bolts and things like that. They'll, they'll last a long time outside in that situation. Um, but also to note, plasterboard screws aren't the strongest of screws, they're very brittle. They're great for holding plasterboard to timber or metal studs, but not great for timber to timber situations or chipboard. And then moving on, we've got these zinc coloured screws. We've got quite a selection in here. These are probably the most common. Um, again, different threads. There's one here which is a self-cutter, which will drive through thin metal. Um, different threads on that. This is a machine thread, square end on that or a flattened end and the threads are very close together. Again, that's not ideal for using on wood to wood situations. Then moving on, we've got these coated. These are pretty much zinc screws or this kind of screw that have been coated to make them last longer. And the ones that are slightly more yellow uh, last even longer. They're great for outdoors. Um, they last longer than these non-coated. If you check on the box, or the description when you're buying them. The zinc passivated screws will last a lot longer than just these plain zinc and the black toughen ones for outdoors again. We've also got in here some brass screws. They look like the zinc ones, but just the slightly different color and the strength. These are great for when you need to see a finished screw. You're gonna end up seeing this finished screw. They look great. They've got the round head slotted 
always look a bit classy with a slotted head on there um, and that's that's pretty much it so from this selection that we've been sent and that we had in our not to be used anymore <laughs> screw tin we've got a collection or a selection of some of the most common screws there are others that you might not be aware of so we've got these plasterboard screws you may be familiar with these you drive this in by hand into plasterboard but you have to really make sure that you use the screw that comes with them because the teeth match up with the inside of that fitting so make sure you use the correct screw or else it'll just cause trouble spinning and not being able to take them out we've also got here a torx head screw this is great for drilling or driving straight into block well brick or concrete pilot hole that just the size of the shaft down the middle and then fire them in there a really strong fixing we've got a coach screw here um, with a hexagon head and that's great for joining timber two pieces of timber together really nice and strong again if you want a different look rather than the traditional screw and these won't pull into the wood as much can also be used with a washer as well to stop that from pulling into the timber I think we've touched on this one this is like a coach screw but this has got a self cutter on the end yeah and finally we've got these machine screws identified with a straight um, length down there cut off nice and flat at the end squared and of course on the machine thread the, the machine screws the threads are much closer together easily identifiable against a wood screw so I think it's out with the old jam jar little tin of screws I always recommend it's easy to keep more nicely organized like this if you can't keep them in their individual boxes if you do keep them like this it's a good idea to take off this label stick them in there so you know what you've got but if you do keep them in this box one top tip that I like to do is I like to take a screw and stick it in the side of the box and that stops the box from coming apart in use so yeah that's our little guide to screws hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching comment below let us know what you think and we'll see you on the next one Thanks very much.